Let's get started on your notes over quadratic transformations day one. Today's transformations are going to focus on reflections across the x-axis. That's the horizontal axis that is right here. So reflections across the x-axis as well as vertical translations. Your notes might look slightly different from mine, but all the content is the same. So just follow along and fill in your notes. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at our quadratic parent function, and that's this right here. It's the most basic quadratic function that we have. So we're going to create a table of values from this function, and this is what it's going to look like. When I input a negative 3, remember, and that looks like this, okay? I like to replace x with parentheses, and then inside there I put what x equals. So negative 3 squared is going to be negative 3 times negative 3. So let's fill this in. Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. And as you can see, all of the y values are positive because if I take any number and multiply it by itself, whether it be a positive number or a negative number, my answer will be positive. So now we're going to graph this on our coordinate plane. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4, 3, 9, negative 3, 9. And now let's graph it. And we've got this U-shaped graph. What's our domain? That's our set of X values. It's all real numbers. Range is our set of Y values. Y is greater than or equal to 0. And if you have set notation, it would be 0 to infinity. And the vertex, the vertex is the highest or lowest point of the graph. In that case, our vertex is 0, 0. So do you notice a pattern with the points? Do you see a pattern? I do see a pattern. Yes, I do. Each y value is the square of the x value. which is always positive. So I kind of like to write this. We're going to go out one. So we start at 0, 0, and then we go out one, up one. So we go out one, up one in both directions. And then we'll go out two, up four in both directions. And then we'll go out three, up nine, etc. Okay, out 4 up 16, out 5 up 25. So if you know your perfect squares, that will help in this situation. So this pattern repeats itself with every quadratic function with variations depending on the equation. And we'll look at that um, in day two of our quadratic transformations, how, when the pattern might not repeat for those types of quadratics. So let's look at the next example, number two. And as you can see, I have a difference. There is a difference in my equation. There's a negative in front of that x squared. There's a negative. So now if I apply, that's going to look like this. If, I, if I'm filling in this table of values, negative x squared. So when I plug in a negative 3, using my order of operations, negative 3 squared is 9. And then I'm going to apply the negative. So that's negative 9. When I plug in negative 2, I get negative 4, negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 4, and negative 9. So now let's graph all of those points on the coordinate plane. I like to start with 0, 0. And then 1, negative 1 is a point. Negative 1, negative 1 is a point. 2, negative 4, and negative 2, negative 4 are points. 3, negative 9, and negative 3, negative 9 are also points. 
Whoop, that didn't look very good. Let's redraw that. Much better. Okay, so as you can see, our domain is still all real numbers, but our range is no longer y is greater than or equal to zero. It's y is less than or equal to zero. Our vertex has stayed the same. So how does f of x change? How does f of x equals x squared change? Well, the graph is reflected across the y, across the x-axis, I'm sorry. The graph is reflected across the x-axis. So that's this axis right here, right? That's my x-axis. And if we look at our first, our quadratic parent function, it's been flipped, right? That's what a reflection is. It's like a mirror image across that axis. So all of our y values became negative. And isn't that interesting? This is, if x squared was our y values, we took the opposite of all of those y values. So that's why all of the y values in, the, in our table of values became negative. So what's the difference between f of x equals x squared? f of x equals negative x squared. All y values became negative. So I like to say opposite y. And then we have what's called a rule, okay? The rule, if f of x is fancy for y, okay, and I'll put that up there, f of x is just fancy schmancy for y, and I know that the difference is that it's opposite y, then my rule is opposite of the y values. So a rule in these transformations, quadratic transformations, you'll have f of x in it. So this f of x, it's just a rule, okay? A guideline, it's what we follow. So opposite y, negative f of x, opposite f of x, okay? All right, let's go to example number three. So as you can see, um, my function is f of x equals x squared plus five. So let's just plug in these values. When I plug in negative three for x, I get 14 for y. When I plug in negative two for x, I get nine for y. And then I'm just gonna go through and fill in these table of values. If you'd like to pause the video and do the same, that would be wonderful. Negative one, I get six. When I plug in zero, well, I get five. When I plug in one, I get six. Two, I get nine and three I get 14. So now I'm gonna graph these points on this coordinate plane. And I know I'm gonna start at zero, and I'm gonna go up there. And I notice that negative one and positive one still have the same values. So I'm gonna go out one and up one on both sides. And out two and up four because negative two and positive two also have the same y values. So this is what my function looks like. And as you can see, my domain is the same. My range, however, is no longer y is greater than or equal to zero. It's y is greater than or equal to five. Okay, it's not gonna go any lower than five. Uh, my vertex is 0, 5 right here. That's the lowest point on this parabola. Obviously, it opens up because the a value is positive. So how does f of x equals x squared change? What's the difference from your parent function to this function? Well, the graph has been translated vertically up 5. So what's the difference between f of x equals x squared and f of x equals x squared plus five? All the y values have increased by five units. So 
So what would that rule look like? Well, remember, if f of x is fancy schmancy for y, then we're going to take f of x, and if they've all the y values have increased by 5, then we're going to add 5 to it. That's what our rule looks like. Okay? So that's a vertical translation. We took y and we added 5 to every single y value. So let's go on to number 4. And this is the, this is the last example for today. So now we have f of x equals x squared minus 5. Again, I'm just going to go through this table of values, plug in each x value, and determine what the y value is for that point. When I plug in negative 3, I get 4. Negative 2, I get negative 1. When I plug in negative 1, I get negative 4. 0, I get negative 5. When I plug in 1, I get negative 4. When I plug in 2, I get negative 1. And 3, I get 4. So I see, again, these two points have the same y values, okay? And that's kind of the Lone Ranger, right? Every point around that is kind of like negative 1, negative 1. That's something that I noticed. So 0, negative 5 is where I'm going to start. 0, negative 5. And then I'm going I'm to graph 1, negative 4, and negative 1, negative 4. And then I'm going to graph 2, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 1, then I'm going to graph 3, 4. So notice from that vertex, we'll, we're still repeating the pattern. From this vertex right here, we'll, we're still going out 1, up 1, out 2, up 4, out 3, up 9. So the pattern is repeating itself for every single one of these examples for today. Our domain stays the same. However, what's our range? been shifted down. So our range is now y is greater than or equal to 5 is the lowest y value on here. And the vertex is 0, negative 5. I'm sorry. The y is greater than or equal to negative 5 in this case. That is negative 5. So how does f of x equals x squared change? The graph has been translated vertically down. And then, what's the difference between f of x equals x squared and f of x equals x squared minus 5? All the y values have decreased by 5 units. So then what, what would our rule be? Well, if all the y values have decreased by 5 units, then I'm going to take y and I'm going to subtract 5. That's my rule. So let's do a little recap of day one. So the effect on the graph of x, f of x equals x squared, right here, when I have f of x equals negative x squared, when I put a negative out in front, that means it's going to be reflected across the x-axis. When I take x squared and I just add 5 to it or add any type of number to it, that's a vertical translation up. So that means it will be translated up five units in this case. If I had x squared plus seven, that means it would be translated up seven units. So it, the whole graph will move up, okay? And it really changes that vertex and it, it changes the range, okay? That's really what it changes, but the pattern will repeat itself. Then f of x equals x squared minus 5. Well, this will do the same thing, except it will be translated down 5 units. So some big takeaways for today are these vertical translations. The pattern of points on my quadratic stays the same. From my vertex, I'm still going to go out one, up one, out one up, out two up four, out three up nine, etc. Unless it's been reflected across the x-axis. Then it would be out one, down one, out two, down four, out three, down nine. And the big points to remember is that my vertex changes. 
when I am moving, when I'm translating this quadratic up or down, that vertex is moving. That's affecting my range, okay? Because those, the y values are changing. The y values are go, all going up or they're all going down. So it's affecting my range. And these conclude your notes for day one of quadratic transformations. I hope it was helpful.